The Kano State High Court has affirmed the suspension of Abdullahi Ganduje from the All Progressives Congress APC. Granting an ex parte order, the court restrained Ganduje, APC national chairman, from presenting himself as a member of the party. Al Haji Ganduje was suspended over alleged fraud by executives in Dawa King Ward on that Tofa local government area of Kano State. However, the Working Committee of the APC in Kano subsequently nullified the suspension and punished the ward executives. Later, the court ordered Ganduje to stop presiding over the affairs of APC National Working Committee. The application was granted by Usman Naba, a judge following an expert motion filed by Ibrahim Sahad on behalf of executive members of the APC in Ganduje's ward. The court directed the respondents to maintain the status quo pending the hearing and determination of the substantive suit on April 30. Well, to make sense of where things are, I'm joined in the studio by Honorable Mohammed Yusuf, Special Advisor on National and Public Relations to the Kano State Government. Honorable Yusuf, thanks for joining us on Arise Prime Time. Thank you so much, and uh, it's always an interesting time being with you people here. So you have been working for the Kano State Government for about a year now since you came into power. Uh, what's your experience so far? Well, it's uh, a very good experience uh, working with the state government. Uh, fortunately for me, I have uh, had a similar experience working with the state government between the years of 2011 to 2015. So it's not something new for me. It's just an offshoot from where we stopped and we felt it's a time to continue giving our best for the people. The, the government, uh, the governor, Abba Yusuf, set up a commission of inquiry yeah. to look into misappropriation of uh, funds or public property and yeah. assets yeah. by the former go governor, Alhaji uh, Ganduje. Yeah. Um, what's what's, what's the, the, the goal overall of this government? Why are they doing this? Well, uh, you see in the modern world today that we're in, and equally in a democratic setting that we all happen to be in. Uh, it is just normal and it is part of the democratic processes. Uh, if you noticed, uh, we are running a presidential system of government whereby we have the executive, we have the parliamentaries, and then we have the judiciary. But unfortunately, we happen to be running a system whereby mostly at the state levels, you see the parliamentary system, the, the, the parliament, the state assemblies, usually do not do the job given to them. That has been a check on the executives. And if they have been the check valve on the executives, most of the excesses of the executives will have been curbed at that level. So being that as it may, uh, that is why most of the times you see after succession, the, the incoming governments, when they come in, they have to uh, look at the books. And most time they find the books, they see a lot of things being wanting and they will be left with no option but to dig just to ascertain the truth. Not necessarily because the governments want to go after anybody but just to clarify and be sure that everything is in place. You can see it's happening in different places. In Kaduna State, it's happening. In Sokoto, it's happening. So it's happening in so many states are setting up committees of inquiries just to ascertain. So it's part of the democratic process and it is healthy. That's an important point you've made with regard to uh, state houses of assembly and the executive arm of, uh, or the governor, the executive governor, usually they seem to be totally powerless yeah. towards the governor. You have been around the corridors of power. It, it is a problem in Nigeria. How do we resolve this? Well, I think it is uh, going to be resolved first by the people of Nigeria because uh, you have to have this experience maybe going 
to run for election in the first instance. But let me tell you, if I'm to go into uh, how we can have a solution, this is going to be a whole day talk that we are going to do. But just to give you a synopsis, we have a system of government whereby even if you are elected at the parliamentary, your responsibility there is to make laws and to represent your people and to be a check valve on the executives. But you find that the electorate, they will always be coming to you. They want money, they want this, they want that. And you will be left with no option but to become a beggar in the hands of the executives. And at that time, since the executives are the ones that pay the piper, so definitely they will always dictate the tune. So let's go back to uh, Governor Abba Yusuf. Do you think the government will also probe other governments? So, for instance, uh, Rabbi Musa Kwankwaso was governor between 1999 and 2003 and 2011 to 2015. Yeah. Do you think this is going to happen? Well, I think the best uh, that could have happened in that regard, Abdullahi Umar Ganduji, the former governor and now uh, the former governor of Kano State, will have been in the best position to have uh, investigated the government uh, of his uh, predecessor, that is engineer Dr. Rabi Musa Konkoso. He had the books, he had everything by him. All he has to do was to just initiate it. But unfortunately, I know there have been several instigations of we will probe, we will probe, we will probe. But unfortunately, maybe they have dug and they have found nothing. That is why they have no reason to be able to go forward with investigating. But so what, what is wrong in your government about Yusuf doing, you know, opening that probe? What is wrong? Yeah, yeah. Why can't they open the probe, extend it? Well, there has to be a reason for anything to happen. So there's no Don't reason. Don't forget that Abba Kabir Yusuf ran election against an incumbent government of Abdullahi Umar Ganduji and his deputy. And during the processes of the campaign, Abba Kabir Yusuf has gone to several places to tell people that he has seen a lot of things wrong going on in the government of Abdullahi Umar Ganduji. And when he gets elected, he will definitely probe. So he's just fulfilling a promise he made to the electorate. He did not tell them that he has seen anything wrong in the government that came before Ganduje or the one that came before uh, engineer Dr. Rabi Musa Konkoso or the one that came even before Sheikh Arau. What he told the people was he saw things being done wrongly in the government of Abdullahi Umar Ganduje and he will check and make sure that he brings anybody he finds wanting to the book. So it's just a fulfillment of campaign promise like I said. But you do see why this can be viewed by some as a selective um, probe, yeah. you know, focusing on Ganduje. Yeah. You do understand that? Yeah, I do understand that. You know, when you are uh, in government, it is always different uh, with people who are outside the government. The people from outside the government, they will have their own thinking. But a government is an institution whereby they only work with what they have seen immediately. If Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf decides that he has to open the books from 1999 of whatever has happened within that period, when is he going to have time to work for the Kano people? But he can look at the immediate books that are before him and he can be able to be in a position to exercise his powers as the governor of the state. So let's be clear. Your opponent said this is a witch hunt. This is not a witch hunt according to you? Well, I don't think it's a witch hunt. It's a democratic process that is healthy. If you feel it's a witch hunt, why I will say it's not a witch hunt? Why not just come out and come out and be clean? If somebody said he's alleging this or alleging that against you, I have seen this, I have seen that, and I've seen this, and I've seen that, and you feel it's a witch hunt, then come and shame the devil. Come outside and prove him wrong on his allegations. It's as simple as that. So the Kano State Anti-Corruption Commission Chairman, uh, Muhuyi Magaji, yeah. was also quoted as saying that Ganduje took one billion from the state, a month to the expiration of his tenure, and this money was not used for road renovation as yeah. was planned. Yeah. It says this is a tip of the iceberg. Yeah. So that's a worthy allegation. You yeah. know, so there's this going on and then there's the uh, probe or the commission of inquiry. Yeah. Um, you, you would have to prove this really yeah. in court. Yeah. 
Well, uh, Muhima Gaji is heading an agency of government that is given the responsibility to investigate and uh, apart from even investigating to charge somebody to cut for whatever he finds wanting. So he is in a better position to talk on that regard and I'm sure for him to have uh, made those allegations, he has already seen the books and he's sure about what he's saying. So these are matters that can uh, go to the court and the court will be in the best process to determine whether what Muhima Gaji said is right or he is wrong. And uh, <laughs> Dr. Abdullah Umar Ganduje will have the opportunity to defend himself. If the allegations against him are wrong, then he will go scot-free. It's as simple as that. So um, Ganduje has tried to defend himself. I think we have um, something on that. So I'm not surprised when such controversies emerge from the grassroots coming up even at the national level. But what is important is the reality, the legality, the morality of the variables that are at interplay. When we heard the news, we knew it was not true. But we had to exercise patience and see how things would be unfolded. And after fair investigation, physical investigation, it was found that those who met with the officials of Kano State Government. So that's Alhaji Umaru Ganduje, yeah. former governor of uh, Kano, Kano State. State yeah. He's also the national chairman of the APC, although that's, that's in contention. Yeah. <laughs> now, so what do you make of what he has said? Well, to be very honest with you, it was not too audible. I didn't hear, I didn't get all that he has said. But I have heard him mention that uh, 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 something from the grassroots coming up to the national level and things like that. And it's a matter of time for whatever to happen. So I think uh, what I would have said here is if I'm His Excellency, the former governor of Kano State, Alhaji Abdullahi Umar Ganduji, uh, the simple thing to do at this particular time is to do what so many people in the past have done. Let me just cite as an example. The Sokoto State Government set up a judicial commission of inquiry against the government of, uh, I mean, Wazir Tambol. And at the same time, they have taken him to court for other allegations uh, rendering on issues that have to do with the finance of the, of the state. But uh, very beautifully, and I like it so much, that's why I have to mention it here, Mr. Tambuol did not shy away from it. He went to the Judicial Commission of the Inquiry and he went to the court to defend himself. This is how Democrats should behave. Once there is an allegation against you. Look, let me tell you, not only Democrats, as human beings, whether you are a Muslim, whether you are a Christian, we are a creation of God, the Almighty God. And we have already been told that whatever action we take in this world, we will be judged accordingly by the Almighty God when we get there. So this is just a litmus test here on earth. When you are in office, you hold a government office, being it councillor, be it the governor, be it the local government chairman, be it the president, and you are out of office come to the public and account to the people what you have done, what you have done in office. And if there is an allegation that you have done something wrong, it takes nothing away from you to stop running away and shying away from being investigated. Face it. And at the end of the day, I have seen so many people here in Nigeria who have been alleged to have done so many things. And at the end of the day, they have been exonerated by the court. Look, when we're even talking about democracy, the most mighty democracy in the world today is the United States of America. President uh, Trump, the former president of the United States, Trump, he's been alleged to have done so many things in office, out of office, before office, after office. But you can see how the man is always going to defend himself. So it is normal. It is not new and it is not peculiar to Kanu or Nigeria. Okay, so all these issues have led to Ganduje being suspended from his ward yeah. in Kano, uh, Dawaki in Tofa local, local government, government area yeah. uh, of your state. How did you receive this news and how would you respond to it? Well, we were shocked. This is the most shocking news that we have heard.
Why because, are you shocked? Yeah, because uh, going by the example of what has happened in the past to other national chairmen, I remember Mr. Adam Soshomale faced the same thing when he was the national chairman of APC. I remember, I remember Mr. Uche Sakondus faced the same thing. And I remember Mr. Iochi Ayu faced the same thing. So I was thinking any other person that will have become a national chairman of a party, his love should go to his what executives. He should be blessing them every day. They have, should have learned from example and become nice and treat their national executive and be honest and be open to the executives of their own word. But it seems our leaders are not learning from example. And for as long as we don't learn from such examples, now it has happened. And I'm sure even in the future, it will continue to happen. But the APC uh, members of that ward decided to do it. It is an internal party affairs and we cannot interfere. We are not members of the APC, but we are shocked that the APC members from Ganduji ward could have such audacity and courage to have done what they have done. Well, there seems to be a bit of politics at play here. Yeah. Um, there is the view that there's a proxy war between Alhaji Kwankwasu and Alhaji Ganduje. Yeah. And, you know, this probe is part of the reasons why this is happening. Yeah. What's your take on that? Well, if Alhaji Rabi Musa Kwankwasu, the national leader of the NNPP and our leader in Kano State, wants to fight Dr. Abdullahi Umar Ganduje, it shouldn't be a proxy war. We fought them in 2019, we went for election, we won that election, they declared inconclusive, they did what they did and they took it up from us. In 2023 again, we came after them, we defeated them openly, not through the proxy. We don't need proxy. If we are going after them, we go for the jugular through the ballot box and we have done that. So you don't think that you are helping the APC to do their job, getting Ganduje out of the way for your party in Kano? Well, we don't need to get him out of the way. He was a sitting governor. We defeated him twice. So why do we need to get him out of the way? Because he's the leader when he has even gone far away. When he was sitting in Kano, controlling the resources of Kano, being in charge of the government of Kano, we defeated him. So is it because when he's national chairman that we will be afraid of him and will be fighting proxy war? Come on. We are more than that. Who is the political leader in Kano? Ganduje or Kwankwansu? Of course, Engineer Ravi Musa Kwankwansu is the political leader. Don't forget that Ganduje is a product of engineer Dr. Rabi Musa Konkoso. He was his deputy twice. He made him his deputy twice. He was his special assistant when he was the Minister of Defense. He nominated him to go to be the MD of Lake Chad Basin. He brought him back. He was the one that nominated him with the support of Kano people and made him the governor of Kano State. And he ran away from him. And running away, did it help him? He lost to Konkoso again. So obviously, you don't even have to ask that question. The leader of the people of Kano State. Well, he's, he is still the national, well, he was the national chairman, so yeah. there were forces trying to, you know, remove him out of the way. Yeah. But also, um, he removed the former emir of Kano, yeah. uh, Alhaji Al Sanusi Lamido. Lamido Sanusi. Sanusi. Sadly, um, yeah. So it is, sadly, well, what do you have to say? You have something to say about that? Well, I think I was here on Arise during the processes of the removal of uh, Alhaji Sunusi, Lami the Sunusi as the Emir of Kano. And it happened sadly, and that was something which we found we were not so happy about it. So, but at this time around, I think we're not talking about Alhaji Sunusi, Lami the Sunusi. So we should leave it as that. It's happened and it was a sad no, so the point, the point is that there are people that up till today are not happy with Ganduje for making that move or taking that decision. Let so there are a lot of forces against him let me in tell Kano. You, let me tell you, the major forces that are against Ganduji are the electorates. The young boys and girls who are going to school, who he bastardized the education when he was governor. The thousands of people of Kano State who needed a better quality healthcare delivery and they couldn't get it when he was governor. The people of Kano that needed quality and good water to drink when they were governor and they didn't get it. Those are the people that are not happy with who Dr. Abdullahi Umar Ganduje is. And those were the people that demonstrated their powers through the ballot by voting him out of office. So it is not even any other person. It is the Kano people. So how do you see all this ending? 
Well, so it's a lot happening in succession. Well, it, so much is happening, and the only thing that I can say is that there are court processes going on. Whatever is in court is subsidized. We cannot be able to talk more than what we know about it, but uh, we will watch in the coming days. Already he was supposed to be arraigned today. He didn't appear in court. It has been adjourned till the 29th of this month. So we will wait till 29th of this month to see if he will appear. That is it. If he doesn't appear? Well, if it doesn't appear, that is the court processes, and uh, we will, the courts, they have the powers to compel whoever they want to appear before them. I cannot speak for the court in this regard. Is this not a distraction to Governor Abba Yusuf? Well, I can tell you, even at the moment, as I'm talking to you, Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf is doing quite a lot to enhance and improve the quality of the healthcare delivery to the Kano people, doing quite a lot in the development in the area of educational advancement for the Kano people. He is doing quite a lot. There is nothing that is stopping government. His Excellency, the governor, is well committed and focused, and he has a very strong team that we are solidly with him and we will do all we can possibly to make sure that we improve the quality of life of Kano people going forward. In Let's the next four years, people not only from Kano but from Nigeria will be so proud and be ready to learn and emulate the quality of democratic dividends that have been delivered to the kind of people. So let's go back to the issue of chairmanship. All right. Earlier in this conversation, you mentioned other people that have faced similar fate or, or disgraced out of office. Yeah. Adam Soshiomele, Uche Secondos, Iyochia Ayu, yeah. now um, Alahaji Ganduje. What is it? Why are national chairman endangered species, it seems? Well, I think... Uh, the only reason that I can say here is that sometimes the national chairman, they get carried away by the power and the perks of the office. And uh, to so many of them, maybe they have been lucky, they have enjoyed other privileges out there, either of being governors where they have the immunity against any probe, or they have enjoyed other perks of office, whether it be in the national senate presidents or whatever, which is quite so different from being the national chairman. National chairman of a party is ruling over a party which is so diverse in nature, with so many people of so many backgrounds uh, coming, being the uh, central rallying, central rallying point to bring them all together and to be focused towards a system of the party. Definitely, even if one side of the party are happy, a lot side of the party will not be happy with you. So it has always been a trend. And when you look at it from 1999 to date, I have not seen any national chairman of the ruling party that has lasted more than two years. They always get in trouble along the line. Honorable Mohammed Yusuf, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. It was so much interesting being with you. <laughs> Thank you so much, viewers. Please come again. <laughs> Thank you. I would be happy to do that.